Well played. Casual explained. Well played, you fucking shit. All right, let's take a look at this. I have not watched this, so I don't know what it is. What is this? Casually explained Twitch streamers. You know, the last time I looked at... See, look, this was the last time I did one of these. I looked at his thing, and everybody left me so many hate fucking comments. It was insane. I have a feeling that this is going to make me look like a piece of shit. All right, fuck it. So Twitch is the world's largest live streaming platform and owned by Amazon. And while originally it was almost entirely for gaming, it's now expanded to all sorts of shows and IRL content. Thank you. Yes. With top streamers averaging tens of thousands of viewers and... Sp okay, well, this isn't starting out so well. Special events and tournaments getting into the hundreds of thousands. With so much content, there's pretty much something for everyone, whether you're a gamer, a musician, a hobbyist, or just a member of Twitch staff. Unlike... <laughs> Oh, God. Speaking of which, did you see uh, certain somebody's already back from their ban? Oh, my God. TV streaming appeals primarily to a teenage and young adult audience. And having done some streaming myself, I've realized it's basically a place where high school kids go to learn social skills from adults who act like high school kids. This entire chat just got called out. Congratulations. High school kids learning from you guys. And me, actually. Actually, that's me. That's actually me. With this in mind, if you're a streamer, it can be hard to keep everyone well behaved in the chat. So you have to set some rules for everyone to follow. Hmm. Personally, I think it's important to listen to the interests of the Twitch chat. So just Bullshit. like in a democracy, there's really only one good way to make rules. Do whatever the fuck you want till Jeff Bezos stops paying you. Now, a big problem streamers have to deal with is their audience developing what are called parasocial relationships, which is when someone from their chat knows so much about them that they think they're close friends, even though to the streamer, they're just some random viewer. And this is worsened because unlike traditional celebrities, Twitch chat can directly message and donate to the streamer in real time, getting a reaction We're not and making friends. them feel more connected. And while most people think, bro, getting validation that way is kind of sad. Just remember it's the same thing your grandparents do for you, so make sure you have some empathy. <laughs> it's true it's true i'm sorry i'm sorry that's why i tell you guys who aren't sub to me I, I don't read your messages you're dead to me so i can tell you from the perspective of a streamer by far both the best and worst part of streaming is the chat because they make you feel like you're the hottest girl in the club you know there's a chance that someone cool is going to come up and chat with you, but 95% of your interactions are... Here's $5. Welcome, Norton How old are you? to the Bear Gang. How tall are you? Are you single? Yeah, yeah, still single. Oh, poggers, dude. <laughs> poggers. You know what's funny? Is, is nobody asks me if I'm single. They're just surprised that I'm not. Like, when somebody first comes into my stream and they find out I'm married, they're like, wait, what? It's like the opposite. Relatedly, because so many Twitch viewers are young males, a big topic of conversation... Wait, 65... 45... 35... 35% are females? What are they watching? Because they're not here. I wonder who has the... I wonder who has the largest female audience. Who do you guys think has the um who do you guys think has the largest female audience like per 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 percentage wise? I feel like I probably have one of the lowest. Hassan? I could see that in the gaming community is always female streamers. And frankly, female streamers have it rough on Twitch. Not financially, of course, but in terms of being treated like a human being. This is because of the well-known fact that if you donate all your pocket money for that month to a female streamer, they are now legally obligated to be your girlfriend. Oh, I'm not saying it's fair or just, but I am saying I will also do anything for $25. Nevertheless, I mean, you guys want to see something really sad? Speaking of $25, a lot of people always say, hey, hey, Twitch streamers are rich. Stocky, Stocky, you know, uh... Uh, you know, this was my stream yesterday. I had 13,000 people watch me. I made 60 bucks. And y'all wonder why I'm never going to get above 412. I'm honestly surprised I was that high. 
okay? 13,000 viewers. I made 60 bucks, okay? Did, th my, my chart yesterday looks like every single person who's played stocks since last year's portfolio. Like, this is your portfolio, is my stream yesterday, and we have about the same amount of money. Literally, this could be your portfolio. You have 60 bucks, and that's what it looks like. Regardless of whether someone is a pro gamer or you just have a crush on them, at the end of the day, streaming is all about entertainment, and you can watch and support whoever you want. But at least be honest with yourself about it. I've seen people be like, oh, yeah, she does like yoga the beat. What the? Never mind. Each and I've donated because she obviously can't afford a proper outfit. And I've been trying to learn yoga myself, you know? Yeah, okay, buddy. And I'm a tier three sub to Hassan for his political views. And we're back. Thanks for unpausing. It's in the video, Hassan. Now, one thing Twitch is certainly known for is its drama. This is because 98% of all Twitch viewership Ouch. is concentrated in the top 50 streamers, so they all know and interact. Top 50, boys. Top 50. Number 412, boys. We'll get there one day each other and there's no better place to stay up to date on the latest streamer shenanigans than reddit's live stream fail i fucking hate lsf i lsf is great to get discovered or if you're already like on the good graces but if you're not from like a certain group of streamers you don't want to be in lsf every time i go into lsf no matter what the clip about the clip could be about money could be about stocks could be about uh, a joke I made it could be about you know anything I could literally be petting a puppy and all it is is just I I, I, I mean I, I feel like like there's people out there who have like a, a cardboard cutout of me in their room and they just go up and like you know take a needle and a lighter and just every fucking day it's like this guy's a grifter this guy's a thief. did you see the destiny debate Ugh! and it's like that's it that's all it is that's all it is he's a scam artist Ugh! Ugh! fuck this guy Ugh! he says the same jokes over and over again this guy is the worst streamer on twitch this guy's so full of shit Ugh! Ugh! and i'm i just say to myself smells like poor and keep scrolling. Now, despite its name, LSF isn't just a place to post funny live stream blunders. It is in fact a constantly updated gossip magazine for teenage lore masters to turn the lives of famous streamers into choose your own adventure K-dramas. Imagine someone in the chat is like, uh, hey, hey streamer, you just made a big mistake. And you're like, what, what did I do? But nice try, liar. You should have said you were innocent before you were accused of being guilty. Now your Twitter notifications look like this, and the top LSF post is six months of scandalous DMs the OP found in their Photoshop folder. Every other streamer is giving their lengthy... Wait, how many of you guys have a folder? You guys have folders of my Discord? Criticism of your entire character 15 seconds after asking chat what they thought you did. Then only once the entire subreddit is filled with clips destroying your life, Asmin Gold says... Perhaps we should wait for more information before we jump to conclusions. Okay, I don't get that meme. What did I miss? Okay. Which in a complete turn of events completely stunlocks the entire community who have been starved for such wisdom their entire lives. <laughs> this effect lasts for a day or two until destiny absolutely obliterates you for apologizing wrong. I've never posted on the green text or whatever the fuck it is. But this, I look back and laugh at this whole shit that just happened. I, I look back and laugh at it. I was riding high. I was exhausted. I was putting in these big hours, had 70,000 viewers, big thing. AOC was on, GameStop was going on. I could have gone into the weekend. I could have gone into the weekend riding the biggest high of my streaming career. That's all I had to do. That's all I had to do. Just go into the weekend. But one of my mods said, Hey, this streamer wants to, uh, wants to talk to you. So I thought to myself, I'm exhausted. I'm dead. But you know what? Sure, maybe he wants to talk about, you know, 
hey, you know, how's it going with this? And what's your thoughts on the whole thing? And and you had AOC and all that. Like, I thought we were just going to talk about the situation. So I go in completely dead, completely fried, thinking, oh, we're just going to have a nice, fun, casual conversation. Sorry if I've upset you or frustrated you because now you realize that you've been propagating the same stupid fucking memes that have been posted on Wall Street bets with knowing about as much as the average Reddit poster. And the best part of it was him and I have just moved on to completely different things. But there's this little never mind. We're not going to do that. Let's go. You announced you're taking a mental health break from streaming by streaming on your other account and you begin planning your redemption arc with Dr. K. Now, one of the reasons why I'm a terrible streamer... Did I tell you guys? I have been ghosted on Twitch more than probably anybody. So, and I'm not taking shots at anybody, but it seems like I get canceled on a lot. Now, it could just be coincidence that I get canceled on a lot. Uh, I was supposed to interview with Austin uh, a couple days ago, and last minute he got sick. Um... Uh, the Botez, uh, one of the Botez sisters, I forgot her name, uh, was supposed to do a thing with her. She had a trip come up all of a sudden. And they said they get, came up with something important last you minute. Up. Honestly, you, you do have a very similar person. Bro, really? They're literally down the street from me. What the f- Bro, could've, I could have gone to the park and learned how to do this. And then Dr. K reached out to me after we had our interview and said, hey, we want to have you and your wife and another big streamer and his wife sit down for a round table to talk about being parents and, 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 and all this other stuff, uh, you know, and, and, and streaming and what the life is like. And this was all when I was a 10K Andy. But then when I fell off, I, they had to reschedule. Everyone reschedules with me, but I got an empty calendar is all I'm saying. Okay, it might just be a coincidence, but a lot of rescheduling is supposed to take place, and I got an empty calendar. I'm not saying anything. I'm just saying we're down bad, boys. We fell off. We fell off. We fell off. And now that I'm number 412, I don't even get my, my inbox is empty, too. But you know what? I got my own Twitch show now. Dr. K. Now, one of the reasons why I'm a terrible streamer is because I'm never up to date with the latest meta, which is whatever the going trend on the website is. Me, that gets same the here. Most I'm not. Views. Like when Among Us became popular, I was like, eh, probably just going to be a fad like Bean Race. Then a couple months later, I was like, well, I can't learn it now. It's just the end of the life cycle. And then a month after that, I was like, okay, fine, I'll buy it. And then right when I buy it, everyone quits and starts playing Rust. And then when I spent three <laughs> months going through the same process, right when I decided to buy it, everyone just quits to play GDA. And so I was like, Okay, the next trend that comes around, I'm completely ignoring it. I'm not wasting any more money. This is one of the good things about not being a gamer. Sure, I, I, I have a, a very, uh, a, you know, much different job. Oh, my God. Where did all this Zillow volume come from? Whatever. Um, so, um, so I, uh, uh, I, you know, I don't play games very often, and I don't really do it on stream. And uh, part of the reason is, is because not only am I not a gamer, but more importantly... I, I, by the time I fucking learn a game, because I have the time to play it, it's already moved on to the next game. So, of course, what was the next trend I missed out on? Fucking GameStop. Then right when I'm ordering my inflatables for the hot tub meta, guess what the new trend is now? Leaving Twitch to stream on YouTube. It was right in front of me the whole time. But now the tables have turned. Once everyone's a YouTuber, guess who's going to have all the power to decide the meta then? That's right. ExpressVPN. The VPN that... Fucker got me with an ad. Well played, casual explained. Well played, you fucking shit. You know what? You don't get paid for this, okay? And I'm not putting your link in here either. Fucker. God damn it. I don't have a VPN, but still. I mean, I use a VPN, but I don't have a sponsorship anymore. Okay, well, a lot of that was true. A lot of that was true, but he did miss out on some good points, okay? He did miss out on some good points. Uh, it wasn't, uh, the, the, the trend went from hot tubs to sucking on mics. Um, but, uh, but it is what it is and, uh, and it is what it is. Okay. All right. Oh my God. I give up. I give up. I give up. I give up. I give up.